Now, it was a different kind of Valentine's Day celebrations for girls of Tesaru Rescue Center. The rescue center marked the day with a procession to demand equal rights for the girl child. Girls of Tesaru Rescue Center held a procession to the children's office in Narok County in a bid to show that the girl child is equally important as the boy. We are asking for justice. 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 We are Serikali yetu sio tu maandishi iko kwa sheria lakini pia wanatekeleza. Recently the deputy president gave a directive that anyone found marrying an underage girl or violating her fundamental rights will be arrested and jailed along with the local chiefs. When we lose our best girl, tears of pain the mountains. Whenever we remember what our community said, what things are going to be gone guys? Activists want stronger legislation put in place to protect the girl child, especially from parents and guardians who still believe in early marriages and female genital mutilation. Catherine Amwando, KTN. Still on Valentine's, Kiambu Governor William Kabogo has once again apologized to the women of his county. Kabogo had earlier said that no single woman was fit for any leadership position in his county. The embattled governor gave roses to over 100 women in Thika. The women who had gathered for a workshop were shocked when the governor dished flowers to the participants after delivering his speech. <laughs> <laughs> Special message for today. Uh, get loved, be loved, and continue to love. This is not just today. It's not just today, but do it in a safe manner. Yes, let us be safe. We have a society that we need to grow. And Nairobians were last night surprised by a treat from their woman representative Rachel Shebesh as many couples celebrated the Valentine's Day. The controversial Nairobi politician dished out goodie bags and flowers to the surprise of many. Shebesh even went ahead to pay bus fare for commuters in different Nairobi routes. Shebesh says that Nairobians should embrace diversity and promote cohesion and reconciliation. Shebesh has been making headlines in the last few days after she and Nairobi Governor Ivan Skidero agreed to forgive each other after last year's confrontation that saw Kidero slap Shebesh in front of the public. We wanted the Nairobi people to give it a twist so that people understand it's not just romantic love but it is love for leaders to their people, it is love for neighbors, love for mother and children, and that's why today I've come here. As Nairobians are going home, to first tell them as a leader and as a woman a representative of Nairobi that I do love them, but also to ask them to go and spread the love and the message that we are trying to spread this year as a government of reconciliation and cohesion. And I believe Nairobi is the center for reconciliation and cohesion, especially amongst the different tribes of this country. Moving away from Valentine's Day, Rongai Member of Parliament Raymond Moy has asked National Commission to National Land Commission to investigate human rights abuses being perpetrated by foreign landowners in his constituency against quarters. The legislator warned that unless swift action was taken immediately by the government, hundreds of squatters who are still in occupation after working for them for many years and without any place to refer as home would be victimized. Speaking at Capsatec Village, the MP revealed that land brokers and wealthy individuals were colluding with landowners to purchase such firms with a cheaper price before reselling the same with a much higher price, locking out the squatters who are then forcefully evicted. It is not right. And I think the injunction in court was right. You know, it was timely. Twitter AFC wakuja hapa. Wakuja hapa. Pia, pia, nitataka land commission hao wote wakuja hapa. Wasikia vili sise, tutawongea. Sibo, atutaki zingine. 
tunajua kweli mtu wako na haki ya kuuza shamba lake lakini huwezi kuuza shamba lako ka if you have squatters on your farm without kumaliza hizo issues ya squatters kwanza they been squatters here wa maisha hapo over 12 years anyone who has lived on a piece of land over 12 years automatically becomes a squatter unaona and so zile sheria zote that apply to squatters should have applied to you Kaya elders in Kilifi County say they have had enough and will not stand more deaths. The elders who stage demonstrations in the area are calling on the government to protect them from heinous murders carried out against them on suspicion of practicing witchcraft. The demonstrations were peaceful but with a strong message. The Kaya elders who have now decided not to take things lying down teamed up to demand for the killing of their members to stop. Kajana. Tulikuwa tuna wazee ambao hawapungui kama wazee sabini na mbili wakiwa hao wamemalizika mwaka jana. Na mwaka huu tayari karibu wazee 26 wameaga dunia ikiwa sasa ni mwezi huu tu wa pili. Hili ni jambo la kusononesha sana, ni jambo la kuudhi led by the coordinator of Kaya Godama Mzemi Tsanze Mangi they marched from Kaya Mirima Wandege in Vitengeni where several Kaya elders are seeking refuge the elders said they fear living in their homes Chukua hatua ya dharura ama hatua ambayo itawezekana kuchukuliwa moja baada ya mwingine wale ambao wanashiriki wana, wana visa hivi vya kuua wazee nataka tushirikiana na ninyi vijana ambao ni wale wanaohusika na mambo ya mauaji ya wazee na viongozi wa kilivi badala ya sisi kuja hapa kwa ofisi yangu twende tufanye kampeni kwa kila wilaya ambao wazee wanawawa kabisa there has been growing fear in kilifi that the number of the age could decline if drastic measures are not taken police reports indicate that at least 120 kaya elders are murdered every year a group of women stormed KMQ Primary School in Kajiado West protesting for the removal of the school's head teacher Ezekiel Terta, his deputy Phyllis Kisenya and the entire school's committee members on the allegations of corruption and poor performance for the last 10 years. The women engaged local administration in running battles saying they are fed up with the continuous non-performance of the school. The women threatened to strip naked if they were not given a chance to express themselves to look it took the intervention rather of police officers to calm the situation. The school was ordered closed by the area chief awaiting the Ministry of Education to solve the problems. <laughs> A digital medical school called Daktari Health has been launched where patients can now call and be attended to via phone. This project is one of its kind with Kenya being the pilot. The project is slated to be launched in other African countries later in the year. The initiative will diagnose the re and relay the information and offer medical prescription. The project aims to assist in the growth of the country's economy and offer medical services to those in remote areas without travel expenses on their budget. Today we have started the vocational training education center and it is in Nairobi but very soon we are going across the country in major towns. We want to start with the say 100 students and we want to give them 45 tra days training in various, uh, various domain like healthcare, like mining and other. Then after the 45 days training we are taking them into the projects which we are running and then after the projects they can be absorbed in the job so they can start giving the um, results to the any organization we piloted uh, kenya as a starting point because we see kenya always been uh, ahead of uh, a lot of things in directing the entire africa and putting the right direction in the vision we see that uh, we also want to use the Kenya as a starting hub for us 
to bring that vision and then make it to the rest of the Africa. Welcome back. Moving on to the international scene now. For the first time, scientists in Texas have successfully grown human lungs in a lab. This is how they did it. Look closely. You're watching working lungs that UTMB scientists grew in a lab. Those are pig lungs. And these white lungs are human lungs. They grew them in the lab too. And listen closely and you can hear the thump, thump of air moving in and out. Growing organs may seem like science fiction, but it's the goal of medical researchers because so many people need an organ transplant and so many die waiting for one. Well, the most exciting part is to shorten the time that people have to wait for an organ transplant. How did they do it? They started with a damaged lung. So we removed all of the cells, all the materials that were in it, and we left the skeleton of the lung, or the scaffold that's left behind is just the pieces of the lung that are no cells. And that's why it looks so white and pretty, and there's no blood in it. It's, it's very pretty looking. And then we added back cells from another lung that couldn't be used for transplant, but still had some viable cells in it. But it took months until a UTMB medical student named Michael Riddle built a piece of equipment that sped up the process. And he's the one that actually went home and built using, and I'm not kidding, a fish tank that he went and bought from a pet store is what he built the first piece of equipment. It took about four, four months to take the cells from the lung uh, to where all you have is, is a bio scaffold. Um, and we took that process down to about three days. UTMB scientists grew those first human lungs in the lab last year. I'm the first to report it. But it's taken us a year to prove to ourselves that we actually did a good job with it. And so we, you know, you don't run out immediately and tell the world we have something wonderful until we proved it to ourselves that we really did something pretty amazing. Well, well, I guess it's good news for smokers out there. Moving on, blind dates can be awkward, rather, but a 94-year-old Californian woman says you have to take a chance on love. Richard Sharp introduces us to this woman whose outlook on dating and life is, is an example to everyone. 94-year-old Golden Henning is a bit anxious. She's waiting for her dinner date. I heard through the grapevine that he'd like to take me to a movie, but he's going to ask if I want to go. She hasn't dated since the 80s after her second husband died. Her chiropractor set her up on a blind date last week. And then he said, can I hold your hand? I said, of course. Oh, beautiful roses. The blind date went so well, it's time for a second. Meet 95-year-old Richard Shave. Oh, nice. Oh, look at those. And you brought, oh, first, 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 another one. That was so good. Golden wants people to know dating doesn't have to be a game, and manners are important. See what a gentleman he is? Um, it's hard to find nowadays. The couple is chaperoned by Richard's daughter, which makes them both feel like teenagers again. He's my date for the evening, and I am very excited. I'm a Twitter. At Granite Bay's Upscale Hawk Restaurant, the couple enjoy an early dinner. Golden does most of the talking. Ooh, they have duck. Lamb shanks are wonderful. That looks good, doesn't it, Dick? Even the waiter gets chatted up. He's 95. He's the older man. I'm 94. <laughs> Richard and Golden say the key to a great time is to compliment your date and enjoy the moment. She's a real sweetie. She's flattering. She's very flattering. <laughs> so are you. After decades of not dating, Golden says it has given her new life. You have one life to live. It's up to you to enjoy that life. Life is there to live. And if you can't do it for yourself, do it for others. Moving on to sports now. All eyes will be on Gurmahia and AFC Leopards this weekend, even as the 2014 Kenya Premier League season kicks off with four matches on the cards. League champions Gurmahia are in Gabo, where they will be seeking to lock out Bitam for the CAF Champions League, while Leopards wait until Sunday to defend or add more goals to the two they scored against Defense of Ethiopia last weekend. Debutants stop Ryan Akuru stars away in a window against Ho Sony Sugar. Yeah. Premier League first timers, top fry Nakuru All Stars, arrived in a window Friday to start their journey in top flight football, where they meet a team headed by former Harambe Stars coach Zedekayo Oteno. The Sugar Millers survived the chop last season, and Oteno will be keen on starting strong. 
Oliver Page at the helm of Nakuru All Stars will as well be hoping to start positively. Three former champions, that is of Paka, Mathara United and Ulinzi Stars, are the other teams in action on March Day 1. Ulinzi Stars will be welcoming Sugar Miller's Chemilil to their Fraha Stadium. Again, hoping to sweeten their tea after their 90 minutes. Kujana, tumejana vizuri katika msimu na kitu muhimu ni mechi ya kwanza. Uh, ndiyo naweza kagejwa chizaji wako tujue kiwango ile amefika na tunatarajia matokeo mazuri tukianza game ya weekend na chemilil sofa paka visits muhoroni while mathara united takes their battle to mumias where western steamer are waiting to electrocute them across the borders gormahia who on saturday last week aged bitam of gabon 1-0 in the first leg of the calf africa club champions league Cross their fingers in West Africa. Kuromaya requires nothing short of victory in Bitam to progress. On paper, AFC Leopards have high chances of qualifying for the second round. Their 2 0 win at home last weekend requires them to defend or better still, hunt for a goal and they will be through. Well, thank you very much for watching KTN Weekend at One. Remember, tonight is Job Center Night. Make sure you catch it on the Weekend Prime. My name is Najma Ismail. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon.